Hello. Welcome to Respiratory HQ. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about alveolar to arterial oxygen gradient. If you see it on the test, it may be written like this. Sometimes we even call it alveolar to arterial difference for oxygen. And if that's how we're referring to it, you may see it on the test like this. Most commonly when we're teaching it and talking about it, we just call it the A to A difference. All right, so all three of these, it's the same thing. And basically what we're talking about is if we have an alveoli here, we're talking about the pressure in the alveoli for oxygen, so that big A stands for alveoli, and we're comparing it to the arterial oxygen pressure, the PaO2 that comes from a blood gas. So we're comparing the difference between the two. Basically, this is going to tell us how, efficiency, how efficiently oxygen is moving from the, the alveoli into the pulmonary capillary bed. And in school, we spend a lot of time on that, that mathematical formula for the P big AO2. And I think we spend so much time on the math, and sometimes we don't spend a lot of time on the concept. Because if I were to say, the past 48 hours, your patient has had an increasing A to A difference would you know what I was talking about? And if you do, that's great. That, that's absolutely wonderful. But if you're thinking, well, I've heard it, but I've never really understood what that, that means, I'm gonna show you today, and we're gonna do it without math, okay? So let's start. Let me get this all erased. And we're gonna start again. So let's say, here's the alveoli. Here's the pulmonary capillary bed. We're taking care of a patient and uh, we're doing some preoperative blood work, one of those things we're drawing is an ABG. And that ABG is on room air. So they're breathing in room air, which is 21% oxygen. And let's say I ask you, calculate the P big A O2. Trust me on the math, but you're gonna take barometric pressure minus water vapor pressure times the FiO2, and you're gonna subtract the CO2 times 1.25, okay? When you do that, the P big A O2 is going to be 100 millimeters of mercury. And then we're gonna draw a blood gas, and we're gonna take the PaO2 on the blood gas, and let's say this patient has normal oxygenation. That PO2 on the blood gas, let's say, is 80 millimeters of mercury. So what the A to A difference is, is just subtracting 80 from 100. And I'm just gonna write it a little bit differently because I think it makes more sense like this. So alveolar PO2 is 100. We're gonna take away arterial. And the difference we have here is 20. And if you think about it, this makes sense. If the lung is perfectly normal, if the pulmonary capillary membrane, the AC membrane is perfectly normal, the amount of oxygen that you have in the alveoli should cross and be in the bloodstream. So the difference should be a small number. The smaller the number, the more normal the lungs are, okay? So let's say the same patient, you and I, we go on vacation for four days. We come back and the same patient is still in the hospital and now, for whatever reason, they are breathing 100% oxygen. And we draw a blood gas, and that PaO2 on the blood gas is 80. And this is where some people make the mistake. They think, well, PO2 is 80, it's normal. I don't have anything to worry about. You actually do. Because if I ask you to calculate the alveolar oxygen tension, when you do that, it's gonna come up to 663. And remember we said, if everything was normal in the lung, we should have the amount of oxygen that's in the alveoli drive into the pulmonary capillary bed and that number should be very close to the same number. But if we actually do this now and we do the mathematical difference, that difference Okay, so if you look, and we said we were on vacations for four days, right? So this is 
this time and then we waited four days and now we have this situation. What we've seen happening over that four day time period is the A to A difference has increased. So when your A to A difference is increasing, that means something's wrong at that AC membrane, that oxygen is not able to diffuse across it. So a big A to A difference, the lungs are bad sick, okay? A small A to A difference, a small number, the lungs are normal. So if you're increasing, if the A to A difference is increasing, the lungs are getting worse. Oxygenation is getting worse. If A to A difference is decreasing, oxygenation is getting better. I hope this has been helpful and I hope to see you soon.